Hey everyone, welcome back to Instrumentation Lectures. So far we were discussing about medium resistance measurement and we have covered the topics ammeter voltmeter method, Wheatstone bridge method, substitution method and ohmmeter method. In this video we will cover the last method which is carry foster slide wire bridge method. So let's start our lecture. The carry foster bridge is a modified form of Wheatstone bridge circuit and is used to measure medium resistances or to measure small differences between two large resistances. The connection diagram of bridge is like this. Here the value of resistances P, Q and S are known and R is the unknown resistance. We also have a slide wire of length L connected between resistances R and S. Also, small r represents the resistance of unit length of the slide wire. Now let's see the procedure in this method to determine the unknown resistance. In the first step, we adjust the resistances P and Q such that the ratio P by Q is approximately equal to the ratio R by S. That is, we adjust resistances P and Q so that the bridge is approximately balanced. Now in the second step, we obtain the XR balance of bridge by adjusting the sliding contact on the slide wire. Let's say the bridge got balanced when the sliding contact is at a distance L1 from the left end of the slide wire. Also we said that the resistance per unit length of slide wire is small r. So the resistance of L1 length of slide wire is resistance of L1 length of slide wire is given as L1 into R, I mean small r. So the resistance of L1 length is L1 R and this gets added to unknown resistance capital R. Similarly the resistance corresponding to the remaining length of slide wire that is this length which is L minus L1 will be L minus L1 into R and this resistance gets added to resistance capital S. Therefore, the balance equation is given by P by Q equal to R plus L1 R by S plus L minus L1 into R. And let's say this equation is equation number 1. In the next step, we interchange the resistances capital R and capital S. That is, in place of capital R, we keep capital S and in place of resistance S, we place resistance capital R. Now we will balance the bridge again. Let's say the new balancing position of slide wire is at a distance L2 from the left end. So now the balancing equation is P by Q equal to S plus L2 into small r by R plus L minus L2 into small r. And let's say this is equation number 2. If you see equation 1 and equation 2, the LHS of both of these equations are same. So we can equate the RHS of these equations. Therefore we can write R plus L1 into small r by S plus capital L minus L1 into small r equal to S plus L2 into small r by r plus L minus L2 into small r. Now let's add plus 1 on both sides of the equation. Therefore we get r plus L1 into small r plus S plus L minus L1 into small r by S plus L minus L1 into small r equal to S plus L2 into small r plus capital R plus L minus L2 into small r by R plus L minus L2 into small r. Now if you see this L1 r and this L1 r cancel outs. Similarly this L2 r and this L2 r cancel outs. Therefore the numerators are R plus S plus LR 
and here we have s plus r plus lr so you can see that the numerators are same in both the cases so we can equate the denominators therefore we have s plus lr minus l1 r equal to r plus lr minus l2 r and we can cancel out these capital lrs which gives us r minus s equal to l2 minus l1 into small r and let's say this is equation number 3 thus the difference between resistances r and s is obtained from the product of resistance per unit length of slide wire and the difference between two slide wire lengths at balance this is what i meant by this second point over here okay now here the standard resistance is usually known so the unknown resistance r can be found as r is equal to s plus l2 minus l1 into small r okay so keep this in mind as you can see this method is very simple right however there is a slight inconvenience in practical scenario it is not very easy to find the value of this small r so to remove this small r from the equation we add two more steps to the procedure so in the fourth step we shun the resistance s yes with a resistance of non value like this and let's say the resistance of this parallel combination is s dash now in the final step we repeat the steps 1 to 4 in the procedure by keeping resistance s dash in the bridge and again obtaining the difference in length l2 dash minus l1 dash thus we have r minus s dash equal to l2 dash minus l1 dash into small r and let's say this is equation number 4 now if we take the ratio of equation 3 to equation 4 we have equation 3 by equation 4 which is r minus s by r minus s dash equal to l2 minus l1 into r by l2 dash minus l1 dash into small r here the small r cancel outs which leaves us with r into l2 dash minus l1 dash minus s into l2 dash minus l1 dash equal to r into l2 minus l1 minus s dash into l2 minus l1 rearranging gives us r into l2 dash minus l2 minus l1 dash minus l1 equal to s into l2 dash minus l1 dash minus s dash into l2 minus l1 so finally we have r equal to s into l2 dash minus l1 dash minus s dash into l2 minus l1 by l2 dash minus l2 minus l1 dash minus l1 so this is our final equation and as you can see the unknown resistance r is obtained in terms of standard resistance and lengths of slide wire only that is we have eliminated the small r term from the equation now this carry foster bridge method has an advantage since the length of slide wire is the only parameter in the final equation the effects of resistances p and q and contact resistances and the resistances of connecting leads are eliminated now to ensure that this second point is valid it is important that the two resistances r and s are not disturbed or handled throughout the measurement to ensure this is the case a special switch is used to swap these resistors during the test 
another potential cause of error can be the thermoelectric emf generated at the lead junction of resistors to compensate this effect we are providing an interchange switch to reverse the direction of emf so what we do is we initially keep the switch in one position let's say like this and we do the experiment and find the value of unknown resistance capital r let's denote the value obtained in this setup as capital r1 now we interchange the switch to reverse the direction of emf like this and perform the experiment again and obtain the value of capital r again let's say the value obtained in this setup is capital r2 now we take the average of resistances r1 and r2 as the value of unknown resistance capital r this works because the thermoelectric emf generated in one case will be equal and opposite to that generated in the next case and therefore by taking the average they will cancel out so by using an interchange switch the effect of thermoelectric emf is compensated that's all for this lecture if you have any doubts feel free to ask them in comments so that either me or some other viewer can help you also if you found the lecture useful please like the video and also support us by subscribing to the channel in the next video we will discuss about measurement of high resistances thanks for watching and have a nice day